in conversation, I'm in conversation with the artist. I can't always read your messages, but I do read them and I do take on uh, what you say and that you want to give your messages. And also the guest actually sees the messages as well. So thank you. Do keep it interactive and wherever I can, I will mention and and, and say hello to you. It's a bit like Kushti at the moment. He's on. He's on. Man like he's, Kushti. Uh, he's on yeah, yeah, Kushti. I'm a, glad he's better. Again, a great follower and a great ambassador of music. We'll have to get Gushti on the show as well because, you know, one of the men, people in the background who've, who've done so much in, in putting Without shows doubt. together. Gave, oh, gave everybody in like my generation the platforms yeah. uh, to produce uh, to produce our music, basically, in terms of, like, we could make our tunes. kushti has got events coming on. He gives a platform. We could play our tunes. Yeah. You'd, you'd gauge your songs sometimes by crowd reactions before they came out and stuff like that. And that was very important. And that would help you also like in the studio and stuff like that, because you're engaging with the crowd, you're getting a chance to do it. And the way I look at it, me personally is, oh, thank God, like Kushti got me this platform yeah. because I wouldn't have been able to play my music. I actually, I actually met a movie box at Kushti's events. That's how, oh, they, okay. actually, that's how they actually signed me. I was yeah. playing the remixes and they heard them. They were at his event. There you go. So, thank you, Kushti. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to talk about live events. You're still on the scene. You know, you're still playing. You're still DJing. Uh, I'm sure I saw something the other day. You were playing at one of the clubs. Um, in Birmingham, yeah. Yeah, the art. Yeah, yeah in Chester Birmingham. Cats. You were in Birmingham as well. I, I mean, tell me, Surinda, because obviously you've been in the industry for for, for, for quite a long time and, and music has taken uh, a change. But what are the crowds like? Because you've always played like to the university crowds, to the young crowds. I'm sure I must have been in a gig where you've played and obviously I'm like 50 odd now. So is there a change in music? Is there a change in culture? Is there a change in in our youth, how they see music, how they perceive music? I mean, you know, give us a bit of an insight into that. Yeah, it's completely changed. It's mm. completely changed. I think it's kind of caught up the way uh, uh, a mainstream uh, audience would perceive music and appreciate it. So a lot of... Uh, where in the past it was only like a few lads that were on that kind of thing to like progress with the time see what's happening in uh, mainstream audiences and circles and but basically the mainstream social culture and trying to adapt or trying to put that into our own Pangra Desi culture who weren't really following social mainstream culture they had mm -hmm. their own kind of like vibe and how to do things kind of thing yeah so obviously as you've seen yourself social media is obviously a massive thing in the social culture the world basically in it and obviously you can see how it's taken by uh, our people india etc it's really really big there yeah so and i think in the past uh, obviously the technology wasn't there and that wasn't there it wasn't really a thing to look at but some people were still obviously interacting online and doing what they could yeah uh, because it was they realized that might be the way forward and uh, audiences uh younger children they're just there it's like a song a week a song a day you know, it's that kind of mentality. They're just swiping across, heard the first song, yeah. swipe across, heard the second one, keep going, keep going, keep going. So that's why you find people need to just keep dropping content because mm. it's all, again, to do with social media, people want content. So whether that's music, video, cartoon, whatever it is, people just want it. The demand's there. So and TikTok tells you that, you know, people's songs going crazy, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, so I mean, you know, in it's our playing industry, a big part. You know, sorry. It, I'm just saying it plays a big part. And obviously, musically, it, uh, people still sometimes say, oh, yeah, uh, it's, it's very modern. <laughs> it's very modern. Don't realize in 2022, of course it is. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Obviously, you don't expect Punjabi music to be playing like since it was in the 1800s, 1900s. Obviously, it has to develop and evolve. Yeah. No one's saying that the culture and tradition should be lost because that's still performed. And it still brings in massive crowds to this day. So it's never going to be lost because that's our culture. Isn't it? mm -hmm. It's always going to be there, no matter what, no matter what. But that doesn't mean to say you can't develop the music to adhere to people's new listening tastes because the way they've grown up differently in a different world with the internet, different music's thrown at them. So the ears more developed, they're hearing different kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously, they wanna, you want to obviously put your culture across and obviously people growing up in this day and age, it, it, you've got to implement your culture to them and obviously a musical culture. So it's difficult. So mm -hmm. people try to find a blend to hit that new generation of kids who are growing up really in a westernized way, culture. 
and basically have a bit of their tradition and culture in them in it. So how do yeah. we like how yeah. do we you know approach that? That's the way I look at it. I just think, mm -hmm. okay, what's the so you're always developing your sound basically. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I still play to university class. My music is obviously aimed at that generation. So yeah. the guy I was making music for who was 18, 10 years ago is now 28. So I'm looking at an 18 year old kid again, like what you uh, to. exactly. Well, that's what I, that's what I was saying. That like, because you're still playing to to that crowd. You're yeah. still playing at the university crowd, and and we were at the the Bhangra show down the other day, and it's so nice, so refreshing to see that that love for Bhangra for the culture of it. it it's still there. Yeah. In, within our children, because my children are that age as well now, and, and and it's just beautiful to see. So with you as 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 a developing um, uh, or forever evolving uh, music producer, mm. so social media obviously the, the social media is coming within your time as well. Where at one point you used to, like you said, go to maybe you know Kushti shows and try out songs there, but now you well at that, at that time uh, me, uh, Kuli, God rest his soul, RDB. We were like a bit IT geeks at that time. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were already on like social media. We had a website, uh, right. I had a domain, which was called bangra.co.uk, which is oh. imagine it's quite prevalent then. I still have that. Yes. And uh, at, at that time, uh, RDB's music was getting played worldwide via that website. They used to have, that used to be the domain name for it, stroke RDB as it were. And all the remixes and mixes were all on there. So people around the world were getting to know us via our social media you could you could call it social media but it was our website domain right right yeah but it was all it based and that's the way we thought everything was going forward wow and hence you know we were so doing you were it sort there. of ahead of your time then uh, or, or we were just behind <laughs> no 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 it's just I, just I depends on the person really i'm sure there was there was internet just come about i forget it was modems then weren't it mm -hmm. there was no yeah, broad yeah. It, was, it, was, it was i was using dial-up modem yeah and uh, in the night, late 90s, when I was at university and stuff like that. So uh, it was from there, really, it all took off. After 2000s, you know what I mean? 99, finished university. And uh, the music started happening then. And obviously, we were IT geeks, me and Collie. So yeah. we wanted to incorporate our music yeah. via some kind of internet platform. We saw that as a platform, the internet, to yeah. get out across the world. I mean, so, I mean the whole the whole it was, RDB. It, it was rhythm, doll, and bass. Is that is that is that where the the RDB kind of? Yeah, started? we actually used to call it roti, dal, and bread. Well, there yeah. you go. <laughs> roti dal and butter as well, but roti dal and bread, and it has worked for you, you know, for giving you roti, hasn't it? You, you know, you're well, a full time musician. The RDB guys, it did. Yeah, I was uh, doing my own uh, as soon as back to basics, as it were. Yeah. And uh, like I've said this a million times before, when I met RDB. Uh, we decided to work together, decided to, like, uh, I was already dropping an album with Movie Box and decided to, like, bring them through, as it were, launch them uh, to get out there because I thought they were brilliant and very talented uh, right. when I met them. So, yeah, that's yeah. how. I mean, the Surinder Ratan uh, brand uh, still going on for such a long time. And how, not difficult isn't the word, but how challenging is it to keep that brand going and to keep evolving uh, the Surinder Ratan music I side. Of you love, I think if you love music, mm -hmm. there's something inside you, that kind of thing, where mm -hmm. you automatically evolve because you're always hearing what the new sound is on the street. And the new sound obviously attracts young people. And that's the culture. And we'll follow it, for example, drill. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, drill music it seems to be the sound uh, when Afrobeats was. So I was just following and I always followed uh, what's on the street, basically. What is the culture on the street? What are the youth listening to? And my sounds and develops is based around there. And because I enjoy urban music anyways, what I've grown up on, it's it's just like second nature kind of thing. Oh, is that new sound? Let me hear it. Okay. Like I didn't like drill to begin with in the beginning of the early days of drill. And yeah. then when it more, when it started to develop more, that's when it really started to yeah. uh, appeal to me. So I mean, I mean, I mean the, the days of, of the lick, uh, you know, what a huge album. I mean that music you can still listen to it and, and it's still fresh as ever. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. Where it did you find that freshness? Books, yeah, yeah. It still gets played. I think it's because it's urban music and I think urban music depend on the genres, they always come around again. If they go out of date, they always come back kind of thing, drum and bass, you know, yeah. Afro beats, garage, UK garage. So at the moment UK garage is at its turn around, uh, especially in the like the South Asian 
uh, kind of uh, scene uh, mm-hmm. down in London with the daytime is kind of big up to them. They did the documentary Ministry of Sound. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Young Sing. Uh, and they revived it, revived the whole scene in terms of that kind of sound and uh, Asian underground, basically. So, yeah, big up to them. So, and that's what it is, basically, as you can see. So you, you're hearing that. You're hearing people still listen to that sound. That's great. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I mean, tell me about when Excellency came up to you with 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 the dabbe with her bajan talwar. Obviously, I'm I'm talking about you know dabbe galmukki na sajna naalo meri dabba vi teri raat mungi. I mean, did did you straight away did you straight away knew that this is the music I'm going to put to it, or was the music first made, or did you all sit and because obviously that's one of your you know one of your huge hits that yeah. still is even today and for years to come will still be played. Yeah, what happened was. Uh, I actually uh, went to, I knew uh, I wanted to do a garage track. So I knew what kind of tempo uh, I wanted uh, to make it work. Mm-hmm. So I was looking for something on that, a particular tempo because I thought that would fit garage, which was around 133 at the time I wanted it mm-hmm. to be. 130, 133. And uh, I was trying to approach different singers and uh, a few were turning me down. They weren't too sure, I don't think. And uh, Excellency the world said, no, uh, come down to my house. It was very kind. And uh, I went down to his house. Uh, I had bison and tea with him. Absolutely <laughs> fire, bro. <laughs> and uh, actually... He, he, he always has a story to tell as well, doesn't he? Yeah, actually, Kushti was the person who actually took me. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, All right, well, Kushti, thank you. Yeah, and uh, we sat down and... Uh, uh, I said to H, I said, uh, this is the type of tempo I need or this type of song. So he goes one minute and he's going through his paperwork. He goes, I've got this. And as soon as he sang it, I just started tapping my knee and I thought, oh, mm-hmm. this fits that tempo. This mm-hmm. sounds wicked. I said, yeah, that'll do. And he only sang like the first two, three bars of it. But obviously, right. while, when he sings, he sounds wicked, isn't it? So when he's singing that in front of you, you just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this is going to sound good yeah. with his powerful voice. And... Uh, Cut a long story short, yeah, we got that, and he came to the studio, recorded it, and I was like over the moon. I thought, okay, wow. And I I only got the uh, realization of it is when I've pushed his gig again. Funny at the Equinox in London. <laughs> uh, was it the Equinox? So I think it was the Wag Club in London, New Year's Eve. Right, it was. It just been released, and I went there, and he goes, "Watch what happens when you play it." And I, as soon as I played, the crowd went bonkers and started singing it. Yeah. And I've rewinded. It. I've gone, oh my god. To sing in my song, usually I'm putting the faded down with other people's songs. B21, you know, I'm DJing, yeah. and I'm always you're the DJ that puts the faded down, makes the crowd sing the chorus or something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I didn't realize a bit shocked to me when it's happened to my own song. Yeah, I think, oh my god, the crowd are actually singing my song now. Yeah, well, well the one that I've made, so uh, it, yeah, it was crazy. And then obviously, what an amazing, it became, what an amazing it feeling genre of its own because uh. Everybody wanted to do a Punjabi Garage song after that. It became the new craze. Yeah. Because I think also it gave platform to a whole new set of artists mm-hmm. that I don't think, so key, as you know, wouldn't have been able to show their skills on a Pongra mm-hmm. song. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the MCs, in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to I was gonna mention... So people like G.I. Jat and something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No offence to him, but you wouldn't hear him on a, say, on a Hira, traditional Hira song, would you? Yeah. Of yeah. music of that time. It'd have to be a Garage song. It'd have to be something like where he would fit them beautifully and sound sick on it. Say, for yeah. example, him, HMC, Mets Tricks, all these guys would yeah. sound sick on that. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I, I, I and, and they were yeah, obviously, yeah. they were new generation kids who spoke mainly English as well. Mm-hmm. And they wanted to show that skill on a Punjabi song. So they weren't going to sing their Punjabi singing. They wanted to do what they were good at. So, so it kind so, of, so in, a way, you kind of in a way you kind of opened the door for 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 so many others and for a different genre of music with with Punjabi lyrics really and I mean you mentioned Mets and Tricks as well because you know they're Manchester lads and and, and yeah, they're near you as well and they've you've worked quite closely with them for for so many albums and and tell us a little bit about their journey with your journey as well because you know you will always well, go hand in hand in hand yeah well I met Mets when I was making the album uh, and. Uh, I can't. I, I watched him at an event and approached him basically, and uh, he obviously then got into the studio with me. We recorded it, and after that, the tr- I'm just breaking this down, bro, because I'll be yeah, 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 go for it. Yeah, and uh, he basically once the song was out, I think he was a bit apprehensive of how it would do or not realize the impact. But then when he cer- certainly started when the video came out, he started getting stopped in the street. Yeah. 
from lots of uh, people his own age group, girls, etc. Whatever city he went to, yeah. and then he realised, hold on a minute, I've got fans here. What's going on? Yeah, uh, yeah you know, he's just a, such a lovely guy. As well. Yeah, he was very humbled with it. He was very yeah, humble with it. He rang me up guy. saying, "Surinder, I'm getting stopped in the street. I think the song's going to be doing well." And because we're based in Manchester, we're not in really in the old social circles and media thing from Birmingham to knowing the song's doing well. Do you get what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So we're just in Manchester. We're only getting told for from Midlands. You're the song's killing it here. The yeah, 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 yeah. It is. And don't forget, there's not really no WhatsApp then. So we're not we're making phone calls. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, it, we're getting told like that. So we're thinking, okay, the song's doing well. And then obviously, when he's getting, when we've done the middle at Nottingham, and uh, it was the Up and the Arts middle or something we did, and we played that song, the crowd started going mental, mental, screaming for it, singing it. And that's when I think me and Metz realized. I said, "Well, Metz, you got tons of fans here, mate. They're going mental for you." Yeah. Because yeah. he was getting stopped. People are queuing up, trying to take photos with him and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? He's probably getting worried. It's probably funny. Yeah, funny. Hey, buddy. We were, we were, yeah, <laughs> we were. Yeah, we're. What's going on? Yeah, but at the same time, you got to remember, he's a young lad. Uh, he's yeah. in the music game, and uh, he's he's already doing club live events, but he's really just doing it uh, straightforward for the mainstream Gorda crowd, yeah. really. If you know what I mean. And uh, all of a sudden, he's been thrown into the, his own culture, not thinking it would be trendy. But he's realised now what I'm doing is trendy and cool to everybody. Yeah. And I've got a massive fan base. Yeah. So obviously, met some tricks after that with Ambrosia. Oh. It with the Mish, Mishy, Mishy, Mishy Badu, uh, Worldwide, that song, worldwide. Mishy Ashara, yeah, yeah. And Australia, they're all mental for that song. Yeah, uh, India, Ajamahi, we met some tricks. Sadi B did. You oh. know. These are worldwide anthems, like yeah. worldwide anthems played all over the world, weddings, parties, whatever. And people know their brand and their name. Yeah, now, obviously because of these songs. Yeah. Uh, again, on Hassan. So, you know, does, does he have a Does he have a feel to you? Obviously, you're the you're the creator of these songs and the creator of this music. Um, you know, obviously, we even today we're talking about Excellency or Ambrosia or Mets and Tricks and stuff. Do you ever think, like, you know, the 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 producer, the directors don't necessarily get the the fame side of things as they should deserve? It, obviously, it, you've done yours as a you've done more than you're more than just a music director. You 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 actually put yourself out there. And you're a DJ as well. Yeah, I think what it is, uh, it depends how you want to portray yourself. Sure. Uh, if you want to put yourself up there. Uh, I, think, I think people who know me will know me. I'm not really the one to like go on the camera and start dancing and start doing mad <laughs> moves for the camera shot. I start <laughs> laughing at myself. I love to see that. I love to see that. I, I've tried to do it in the middle with a, with a brush, mate, and I start <laughs> laughing. So uh, it, I find it very difficult. I try to do silly pauses in the minute. So I'll do this when the video comes out. And when I, <laughs> the moment I do it, I make myself laugh. So I think to myself, oh, and people that know me know my character. They think, yeah. that's like that's not me. So I think I'd be faking it, and that's yeah. the, the last thing I want to do on screen. So when you see me yeah. sometimes in videos doing little cameo shots uh, or little sh uh, covering their screens, that's just me. I'm just saying, look, I'm happy with the camera shot. People know it's me. Yeah. My, what's important for me is people know that uh, yes, yeah, Sundar Ratan made it. Yeah. Why? Why is that? Because my surname carries my my grandfather's name, my granddad's name. Oh, you know, I was gonna. Uh, that was what I was. That that was on the tip of my tongue to say you have such a musical name. So does music exist in the in the family? Is that well, what? Yeah, my dad and my uncles they all sang, played instruments, sang. Uh, right. And and it's been like that. And uh, over the uh, like family members who do like Guiani stuff and stuff like that, or classical wow. gifted and stuff like that, around the world. So. It's, it's always been there, but more so in my family because my dad was born here, my uncles were born here, you see. Mm -hmm. So uh, when they were singing, I was hearing it in the rooms, in the house, and just, they, they wow. were you know, they're singing all the time. So that influence obviously came from them. Have, uh, have they never come to you and say, Mira, we gonna come my, uh, my, The way my dad kept me on the floor was like, if I'd come back and say, oh, I've just won this gold disc for my music, uh, my dad to humble me, he said, that's all right, go and clean the dog crap outside. <laughs> you know? Sure. He yeah, wouldn't yeah, let me yeah. get on top of uh, on top of anything. Yeah. I mean, he was like uh, very like that disciplined with me because I was his eldest son, I suppose, isn't it? So he kept yeah. me in good shape. That did, isn't it? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So uh, uh, that's what's kept me humble, really. So basically, yeah. Yeah, like you were saying, I don't too bother. As long as the songs are hit, like Hassas when I made Hassas, mm -hmm. just Ari Ari. As long as the song is a hit and that yeah. stays in people's minds, yeah. that, I'm happy with that because people who know who bought it or. Uh, people in the industry will know, yeah, Surinder's made this, Surinder's made mm -hmm. this. 
yeah, that, yeah. I mean, you you know, there's a there's a stamp that you have on on your music, and you you kind of instantly know, you know, your it is a Sundaratan tune. I, I mean, what about Joe guys? Well, I, you know, I was just thinking about it. something came up on Facebook the other day. I remember when we got together in I think it was in Birmingham and Joe. I thought, oh, I wonder how Joe goes. Then I thought, oh, I'm talking to Sundaratan today, and I'll ask him how's yeah. Joe doing. Oh, uh, Joe doing very well. He's uh, doing a lot of live performances. Is it? Oh, is this uh, okay? Yeah, yeah. He started to get on the live circuit, which is good. And uh, yeah, he's just jogging away doing that basically. Wow, Srinda, what's coming out uh, of the Srinda uh, Studios now? Then what's 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 in the we're, making? Or because we're, we're, we've had two years of COVID, uh, so you've had plenty of time to work home and do whatever thing. So what's what's coming? Some great coming singer, uh, great singers. Uh, I'm working with. Uh, I'm working with uh, some new types of. Uh, a new generation of singers kind of uh, thing. Some of them are just singing straight English, like Punjabi guys okay. and stuff. Okay. And uh, I've also worked with some of the established ones. I've got, got some releases coming. I've uh, worked with Lakawanda, with Dali. So oh, wow, okay. And uh, with Deep again, with Deep Jandu just recently. And uh, so, yeah, so I've got quite a few tracks coming out with some established singers. But I'm always looking for new talent, working with new singers, and it, that's always been my thing, in it to introduce, like, new talent. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's my main priority. Because uh, the way I look at it, a song is a song. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter who sang it. If it's a good voice and it's a good song, the song will always do well. Mm -hmm. It'll always do well. It doesn't matter if Mr. X sang it or Mr. Natwalal sang it. No, no one's ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Natwalal. God, you know, you're going back now. You're showing our age we are now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Laquinda Vidali, that's an interesting one because obviously I'm a big that's fan. That's a garage track. Of Lequinda Vidali, so I was going to say how how you know because obviously he has a great background coming of of Kowalis and and classical music as well. So I think that would be quite a good combination. Yeah, my passion music. is classical music. Mm. My teachers, uh, I don't know if you've heard of them, Niazi Khan Sab, Javed Niazi Khan Sab, and Baba mm -hmm. Javed Niazi Khan Sab. Uh, their dad was a famous uh, singer writer, the film Niazi Khan Sab. Uh, right. And I was lucky to meet them at the Edinburgh Festival. All right. And these guys started telling me about the songs they've written for Hans Raj Hans and all these people that come to the house and telling me who they were. They were there performing Sufi music. Mm -hmm. And uh, cut a long story short, they said, we have to leave. It's a shame we're going to uh, like not speak again. We have to go to another city and we're going to be there for a month. And I said, all right, what city is that? <laughs> you know which city it was? It was Manchester. Manchester. Yeah, so that was a shock to me. So I was very lucky. And we've stayed in touch. We do Zoom calls and stuff like that. And yeah. uh, I became, we did like Shigar Dirasam, like in Birmingham, oh, wow. actually. Okay. Okay. And I became their student. So I just learn it just for the knowledge. Not to say I'm going to be some like amazing classical singer. Yeah. I learn it for the harmonium skills to understand Sargam, to understand yeah. what I'm like trying to portray. Yeah. And so when I'm doing music, it, it plays a big influence in it because you can play a couple of rags and make a riff, for example, mm -hmm. which you wouldn't even thought of. Uh, so it helps me a great deal. Yeah. So, so are you vocally training as well, or are you just just on the no, no, not at the moment. No, no. I'm just uh, learning how more taking one step at a time, learning the mm. theory behind it, learning the harmonium skills. And I think once you start learning the harmonium skills, you start humming the sari ga. I think the vocals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. The tra that's straight away. Wow, that's that's amazing. But you have got an album sort of ready, though, haven't you? I've always heard some yeah, of the great line. Yeah, most of the I've album, had it heard on the great that the album is the albums ready. Most of the album's ready, sorry. And uh, it just needs a few rejigging on some of the tracks, mm -hmm. uh, which I've had there for a while, because the album's been ready for a while, uh, as, you, as you know. And uh, But I need to just, uh, just make a few adjustments uh, for the current trends, really. Yeah. And, and so is, is it still is it still that exciting as it as it used to be? Because oh you were yes, releasing a whole exciting. you were releasing a whole album. The release yes, date more, was announced, it's more and then there was a release party. But now it's kind of almost like a build up on the internet and coming on the twenty third, and here it is, and two hours. Yeah, ago it's, it's, it's more it's more it's more of a buzz because now on the finger on the laptop, like you say, you put it on the internet. But I'm dealing with the world, not dealing with Birmingham, oh, Manchester. Okay. Okay, yeah. Dealing with the world, somebody in Canada, Toronto might be messaging you saying, I love the track, etc. Yeah. It's buying the song, you're marketing it to that particular platform, you're checking your Spotify, mm -hmm. you find out where most of your streams are coming from, which areas, and you're marketing it there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, yeah. for me, that's a bit more fun because I'm in control of it. I have my own label. 
Okay. I can see my own stats. I can see my own analytics, where it's doing well, where it's not, where the streams are coming from. I can see everything right in front of me. Where, wow, and the pack really... line on a label to tell me that information. Hmm. And I'm only being told the information. I'm not seeing it visually in any way. Hmm. You know, oh, you know, the song is doing well. Here's a gold disc. Brilliant. You know what I mean? And now, because you're on your own label, which is fair, I can see my own figures. I can see yeah. my own streams. I can see what I've sold, what I haven't, what's not doing well, etc. Wow. And you just work from there, and you wow. just you just you just keep moving from there. There's making music, and there's also different avenues as well for people to think. Sure. Okay, I just got to get a release out, or I've got to make a song for release. But if you want to earn income and make it a living, there's different income streams for it. You can be making music where you've just made instrumentals, for example, and you can send them to a sync company. Right. Okay. Right. But the sync company then will basically see whether or not they like that instrument or might want to use it for a TV marketing campaign for an advert. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. So, so you you you're clearly enjoying the business side of of music. Yeah, yeah. Because which is, which is quite which is quite yeah refreshing. And a lot of musicians.